worship begins in the Red Book of Common Prayer on page 355. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we hear a word from sacred scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why do you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made you clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. The six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized them with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? 
When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. 
for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At the Last Supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. <coughs> little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my comforter and redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Well, did you hear it? Did you hear it? Did you hear it in today's scripture passages? Did you hear the stampede of buffalo, the roar of lions, the hissing of snakes, and the guttural croak of South Dakota's own ring-necked pheasant? Did you hear it? <laughs> These are the kinds of animals that Peter saw and heard in a vision described in today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Did you hear the sound that the sun, the sound that the moon and the stars make when praising the Lord who created them? Did you hear the sound of the sea monsters, the crackling and pop of fire, the banging of falling hail and the quietness of snow? Did you hear the unexpected sound of fog? Did you hear the sound of the tempestuous wind tearing through the trees? The sound of mountains and hills creaking under their own weight, their tectonic plates grinding as they shift, their rocks eroding away by wind and water. Did you hear it? 
Did you hear the plopping of ripe fruit falling from their trees? Or the sound of cedars as tall as skyscrapers swaying in the wind? Did you hear the sound of wild beasts, the lowing of cattle herds, the flutter and buzzing of bugs and bees, or the flapping wings of birds taking flight all at once? Did you hear it? These are some of the things of the things which made noise in our psalm, singing their song of praise to God, their creator. Did you hear in the epistle reading from the book of Revelation, speak of a new heaven and a new earth, because the first heaven and the first earth had passed away? Did you hear the Lord seated on the throne, say with the very voice that created it all, the very voice that said, let there be light and there was light, the very voice that set the world in motion, the voice that spoke the word, Jesus. Did you hear that voice say this time, see, I am making all things new. Did you hear the sound of fresh, flowing water when the Lord said from his throne, to the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Did you hear these things? I can't hear you. Did you hear these things? Did you hear the voice of Jesus in the gospel? Did you hear our Lord and Savior say to you and to me, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Today, we celebrate Earth Day. Now, let me just say right at the get-go, this is not a day solely reserved for hippie tie-dye t-shirt wearing liberals. It's a day for everybody. This is not a day with some subtle political message. Care for all of God's creation is not a political issue. It's a theological issue. As believers in a God who created all things, seen and unseen, we are the caretakers of the gifts God has given to us. The planet, the animals, water and its sources, the hills, the mountains and the plains are all in our care. This day is about furthering our education and the education of our children. I can't imagine that anyone here among us in this space right now, I can't imagine any of us litter or dumps toxic waste or has a general disregard for the environment. We're here because we are all God-loving, respectful people. So this day isn't about beating anyone over the head with a message that you must do more. Instead, it's simply about increasing our awareness evaluating our own personal and community habits. See, here at Emanuel, we've undertaken the cost of providing recycle bins for paper products since paper recycling is not offered curbside at our homes. So many of you have already made it a habit to come throughout the week and to put paper in the parish bin that's in our parish hall. I meant paper bin in the parish hall, <laughs> whatever. The sheer weight of that thing is amazing and impressive. The fact that that paper is not blowing around the landfill, it makes a huge difference. I mean, the amount of paper that we use here at Emanuel Parish for bulletins, readings, announcements, very long sermons, etc. <laughs> the things that we generate on paper here just by the parish alone is staggering. But when we participate in this project together, it makes a significant difference. Now, we have also placed recycle bins in the kitchen. And those things are used for aluminum and metals, for plastics and for glass goods. And so the people that uh, use our kitchen on a regular basis are encouraged to place those things in the proper receptacles. And then Donna Burnap heads our, uh, our ministry for that. She comes very quietly at the end of her day and she hauls all those things once or twice a week off to the recycle bins that are around town and she does that for us. She does that for you, and she does that for me. And I'm very grateful, Donna, for your ministry in that regard. 
And let's not forget our memorial garden. Now, you've been given a, a tongue depressor thing that Sue Larson will explain to you later during the announcement time as to what we're going to do with that. But sacred space, many of you might not realize, is just outside, reserved for the cremated remains of our parishioners and our loved ones. See, by doing it this way, we use less space of the earth than a traditional cemetery. And because we place the ashes directly into the ground, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, there is no need for the expense of an urn. Not to mention, we're not using the material resources necessary to build either a coffin or an urn. Our memorial garden, then, is an economical and ecological alternative that we'd like you to learn more about today. Now, when the resurrected Jesus began to appear to his disciples, there was a convergence of understanding about the spiritual world and the physical world. They are linked in a way that had not been previously understood or appreciated. As Christians, we continue to hold that the spiritual and the physical are intrinsically linked. It's what our sacramental nature is all about. We use physical elements as a way of connecting us to the spiritual grace granted us by God. At baptism, we pour the life-giving water referenced in today's epistle reading. But what would it look like? What would it look like if I poured dirty, sludgy, polluted water on a baby's head at baptism? What would that communicate to us about God's goodness, holiness, and purity? In the Eucharist, we use bread and wine, bread which earth has given and human hands have made, and wine, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, as the ancient Jewish prayer reminds us. What if there was no wheat for bread? What if there was no land for vineyards because of overdevelopment or pollution or whatever. When Jesus gave his disciples and us a new commandment that we love one another, he did not put a time limit on that love. He did not put an expiration date on that love. See, we are not only responsible for loving those among us whose lives run concurrently with our own, we are also called to love those who are yet to come. We are to love future generations enough to preserve a planet that we inherited from our own ancestors. Just as, loving, just as loving one another is a theological matter more than a political matter, so too is caring for our planet. Caring for our planet is a theological matter much more than a political one. So let's not make today about politics, but let's make it about love about care and concern for God, for each other, and for those yet to come. Only then can we pray with authenticity and sincerity, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Together we turn to page 358 and acknowledge that which we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God.
will be doing the prayers of the people found on the back of the youth group announcement are the prayers of the people for you to look at. We will not be using the ones from the book, our prayer book. In the beginning, the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. The water that God called into being is at the heart of all that lives. Mindful of the many ways water affects our lives, let us pray for our waters and for the life of the world around us. ask your prayers for all people of faith and for the transformations in their lives that are marked by the sacredness of water at the Red Sea, in the Jer Jordan River, in ritual baths, in the washing of feet, and in holy baptism. ask your prayers for the leaders of nations, corporations, and communities around the world, that they may exercise wise stewardship over the waters of their lands, so that all people may have clean water to drink and may live free from waterborne diseases. I ask your prayers for the wisdom to shape creative solutions to conflicts over water in the dry places of our planet and for justice and peace in the desert lands. I ask your prayers for all the waters of the earth, for oceans and seas, for rivers and streams, for lakes and ponds, for watersheds, marshes, and swamps, for the waters beneath the ground, and for all creatures that live in the waters of the earth. I ask your prayers for all who travel or work at sea or on inland way, waterways. I ask your prayers for all afflicted with too much water in flood or tsunami, storm or ice, and for those people and creatures who suffer as glaciers and ice flows melt and shrink. ask your prayers for all who have died and for all who mourn, that their tears of grief may be turned to wellsprings of joy. We give you thanks, most gracious God, for the beauty of earth, and sky, and sea, for the richness of mountains, plains, and rivers, for the songs of the birds and the loveliness of flowers. We praise you for these good gifts and pray that we may safeguard them for our posterity. Grant that we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation to the honor and glory of your name, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
to all of our visitors and guests who are with us today. Welcome back. Uh, Sandy Clausen is back and so many others who uh, uh, have been absent recently for a variety of reasons. Many people who are uh, snowbirds are back with us. It's wonderful to have you back home at Emanuel with us. Thank you for being here. Uh, just a couple of reminders. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. will be the funeral service for Ethel Rounds, um, a long, long, long time member of Emanuel Episcopal Church, a choir member, I think it said, for 68 years, which is um, quite a long time. 98 years old, having lived a long, good, and, and holy life. Uh, we will celebrate the life of Ethel Rounds at 10 a.m. here tomorrow. I hope that you're able to join us. There is a sign-up sheet outside for a blood drive that we are participating in. The blood drive is not taking place here. It is taking place over at the, um, at the blood center. That will be on Tuesday. I ask that you all sign up and participate. The more people that participate, uh, the, the more success we shall have. There are some dishes outside from the ECW. Uh, thank you so much for the um, uh, wonderful um, luncheon and uh, the great success that was there. Thank you for supporting them. If you brought some dishes, please pick them up outside the parish hall. And it seems that the children from Sunday school have something here. What do we have? You got some tongue depressors on your way in. Sue Larson, why don't you come on up and tell us what that game is all about regarding our memorial garden. Thank you. Well, as you know, we have, a, or maybe you don't know, because uh, our church service, the group came out to the columbarium and there are four or five people that didn't know we had a columbarium. So um, this is kind of an education. I was raised in Rapid, uh, Redfield, South Dakota, and it was just absolutely foreboding to cut down a tree. And so I've been raised from an early age thinking you have to preserve the trees. So in the last 20 years, um, our church has really done a pretty good job of planting and replanting things that need to be done at our church. And if you've noticed, we have a tree out on the corner uh, of our lot out here that's probably over 100 years old. And I don't know what the estimate is on the um, lilac bushes, but they're very old also. And they're beautiful right now, so if you haven't noticed them, take a check, walk around, take a look. But what I'm here to tell you about is the columbarium. And <clears throat> it's made on a grid system. And if you look at your tongue depressors, they have a number and a letter that corresponds to a foot square place out in the columbarium. And the foot square works like this. We take the sod off the top of about a foot, and there's an illustration out there so you can take a look at it and see exactly what I'm talking about. And then we take some dirt out, and then if you're your ashes go directly into the soil. Then we put some dirt back on, and then we put the sod over the top of it so that each person is exactly the same out in the courtyard. And <clears throat> we've only been doing this for 12 years, so the board definitely isn't full, but they're uh, on the front of your 
tongue depressor, there's a little white tab. And if you'll write your name on that tab right now, there should be pencils in the pews, write your name on that tab. Then when you go out in the courtyard and go into the combarium area, you'll match your tongue depressor to the square and that little piece of paper on top, you will take that off of your tongue depressor, take it over and on our building is a granite, granite piece and on that it has little squares that match that foot square and that's where your name would be put in if you choose to do this. It's very, um, we have a unique opportunity here. Not many people in South Dakota have a place where they can actually be buried on our church grounds. It's very common in Europe and in other places in the world, but not so much in South Dakota. But we have this opportunity, and many of us in this parish have been here for 50 years or more, and this is our home. This is our family, and we choose to be buried here. Several of you have already made plans to be buried someplace else, not on this church grounds. But we would really appreciate it if you would come out and participate in this because someone may not contact you about this opportunity, and if you understand what's happening, you'll be able to explain it to them. Now, this is really important. On your tongue depressor, there is a color red. Is that correct? Yes. All right. The people who had blue are going to be hard to beat. That's the first service. But my family comes in a long line of competition. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> so if you're planning on having this service beat them, you better get out there and put those tongue depressors in the ground. <laughs> and if you do not participate, I will send Sue Larson to your house personally. <laughs> we'll have our regularly scheduled coffee uh, social in the parish hall as usual. Um, we wanted to do it outside, actually, near the Memorial Garden, but because of the uh, um, threat of rain, we decided not to move all the tables and chairs outside. So uh, what we'll do is, when we get into the parish hall, if somebody would open that back door right by the stage, and people can go in and out right there to get their coffee and their treats and go down to the Memorial Garden and uh, participate in Sue's game. And Sue, thank you. Sue and Les uh, Larson both help take care of our, our gardens, Mara Vakurovich helps with our gardens, and uh, uh, Mary Lee Rood also participates in helping keep our memorial garden tidy and uh, manicured. So thank you all for your, for your generous, generous work that you put into that uh, beautiful space. O Lord, our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Father Chris mentioned for many, many years. It was also the choir director at one time. In fact, the copy I have right here has Ethel's name on it. So at one time, she obviously directed the choir with this hand.
thank you for blessing Ethel, Ethel's memory in that way. It's beautiful. As we are graciously receiving the generosity of your gifts, those who would like a special blessing may come forward following our ushers. Travel. Vermont. I love Vermont. That is wonderful. That's good. Well, I hope you have a good time. Take some beautiful pictures. Have a safe journey. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel. Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me of my sins. During this Easter season, we are using Eucharistic Prayer D that is found on page 372 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. Eucharistic Prayer D on page 372. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you. And through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, 
he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all those for whom we all now pray. Remember, remember Ethel and all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. One of the greatest gifts of the Episcopal Church is the invitation to all baptized Christians, regardless of denomination, that they may join us at this communion rail and receive communion with us today. All are encouraged and invited to attend. We do have gluten-free hosts available. If that's part of your dietary needs, please let me know when I arrive at your station.
who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Amen. Our post-communion prayer is found on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.